In this video, I'll show you how to create a control token that can be used to run API scripts to do things like show or hide tokens on the map, start or stop music, and call other macros. The key to doing this is a script called gmnote. Now gmnote is not part of the standard Roll20 script library, so I've placed a link to it down in the description. Basically what you're going to do is go out here, copy all this code, and then go into your game's settings, API scripts, we're going to say new script, and we're going to call that script gmnote, and paste this in. Now one thing to note about this is this script is expecting that you're going to have a template called 5e shaped in your character sheet. Um, my character sheet does not have that, so I've had to tweak this line a little bit. Uh, here is the line right here, and I will put this line down in the description as well. So basically what I'm going to do is copy this out of my notepad file, and I'm just going to replace everything on that particular line. There we go. And I will save the script. So what this script does is it takes information out of the GM notes section of a token and then displays it in chat. So if I go back into my game now and I open up this token, you can see I've already got some text listed here in the GM notes section. So what I can do now is with that token selected, I can type exclamation point GM note and now the system retrieves the information from that section. So we just seen all the text that was typed here. Okay, so now we can build on this. We can have GM note create some buttons that will do other actions like show or hide tokens or start or stop music. Now in order for that to happen we need to have a token on the map that we want to show or hide and we need another script called token mod. Token mod is one of the scripts that's available by default in Roll20. So I'm going to go back to the script library here and I'm just going to open this up and I'll start typing token mod. There it is. And we're going to say that we want to add this script. We're going to scroll down a little bit. So we're going to say add script. And that's going to add token mod to our game. And token mod will allow us to show or hide tokens by moving those tokens from a layer that the players cannot see to a layer that they can. Token mod also has a whole lot of other functionality, but that's going to be outside the scope of this video. So let's jump back into our game. And let's say that I've got this pit trap token here that I want to reveal to my players if they step on it. All right, well, right now that token is on the GM layer. So if I go to the GM layer, I can click on that token. And what I need to do is retrieve the ID of that token so that I can tell token mod, this is the token I want you to reveal or move to the map layer. So what I'm gonna do here is type in at open curly brace selected pipe token ID, and I'll put this down in the description as well. And this gives me this string here, which is the ID of that pit trap token. All right, so now that we know that, what we can do is create a command button that's going to move this pit trap to the map layer where the players can see it. And so for that, I'm going to go back to the tokens layer, open this up, come down to the GM notes section. I'm going to paste in a command here and I'm going to put this command in the description below so you don't have to copy it out. Um, basically what this is doing here is this bit here in the brackets, this is going to be the name of the button and then this bit that's in the parentheses is going to execute the token mod command. So what this is saying here is token mod, our token right here and again you can just copy and paste that out of the chat box. Um, one safety tip here, when you copy and paste out of the chat box, when you copy here and then paste into one of these text boxes, make sure that you paste as plain text. Otherwise, it may keep some of the formatting from the chat box and that will uh, cause issues for you. So make sure you've got that just in plain text here. Um, what we're saying is we're going to set the layer of this token 
to be the map layer now. So we're going to move it from the GM layer to the map layer. So we'll save changes to that. And now when I run the GM note command again, you can see we've got that reveal floor trap button. I'm going to click that. And now the pit trap has been revealed to my players. Okay, so now let's say we want a way to hide the floor trap again. Uh, maybe the trap resets itself after a certain period of time, or maybe my players have figured out a way to close the trap so they can spring it on some of their enemies in the dungeon. All right, well, that's pretty easy. All we're going to do is go back into the token, and I'm just going to copy this line again and, and then paste it. We'll change the name of the button. We'll call this Hide Floor Trap, and we're going to set layer GM layer, and that's going to move it back to the GM layer. We'll save changes. So now if we type GM node again, we've got two buttons. I'm going to click hide floor trap. And now it's been sent back to the GM layer. Reveal it. Back to the map layer. Hide it. GM layer. There you go. Now, I'd also like to play some music when my players come into this particular room. So for that, we're going to use another script. I'll go back to my game here, and in the script library, you're going to look for Roll20 AM, or Roll20 Audio Master. I'll scroll down here, again, add script. Okay, and now we'll go back to our game. Now, I don't have anything in my jukebox yet, so I need to create a playlist, and I'll just call this uh, My Music, and then I'm going to add a song to that playlist. Uh, I've got a track in here called Legend. I'm going to say I'm going to add that to my game. And I'm going to move Legend into my music. Now, I'm doing this because Roll20 AM requires you to run off of playlists. It won't let you just use individual tracks. So make sure you've got a playlist set up here. And now what we need to do is type an exclamation point, Roll20 AM config and in here what we're going to say is that we want to import the jukebox this is important if you don't do this step then roll 20 a.m. won't be able to access the music so now that we've got that in there we can start and stop music using roll 20 a.m. so the syntax for that is going to look like this we're going to come in here and I'm going to create a new button and the button is going to be called play music and the command here is roll 20 am dash dash audio play and then the name of the playlist that you want roll 20 am to run so in this case my music save changes gm note now we've got a play music button i'm going to click it and now you can hear the sound effect come in that kind of windy sound effect there uh, which is the start of the legend track. Okay, I'm going to go back to the jukebox to stop that. Now, I don't want to have to keep going to the jukebox to stop it, so what I'm going to do is go back into the token. I'm going to create another button. I'm just going to copy this line. I'm going to call this Stop Music. And we're going to say Audio Stop My Music. Save changes, GM note, okay, we got a new button, play music, there it goes, stop music, and it's done. Alright, so every time I've done something here, you've seen me go in and retype exclamation point GM note down into the chat. That's not super efficient, so what I want to do is go up to the journal here and I'm going to create a new character sheet, I'm going to call this character sheet info. All right, and I'm going to save changes. Now, I'm also going to go to my token here, and I'm going to say that my token represents info. Save that. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to say that the selected token is for info, so that it's I have a token set up that I can just drag and drop onto the board again if I need to. And then I'm going to go to the attributes and abilities section. I'm going to create a new ability, and I'm going to call this ability GM note and it's just going to be exclamation point GM note save that and we'll make that a token action 
So now when I click on this, I can say GM note, and it displays. Actually, here, let me clear the chat log so that it's a little more obvious there. There we go, and now we've got our menu. Now, if you watched my other video on creating notes tokens, you know that you can store information in the bars of a token and then display that information to your players. So let's say I want to do that. You know, if you look in bar three here, I've got this fire glyph trap, and I want to be able to display that to my players by clicking a button. Well, I can do that. To do that, the first thing I'm going to do is go back to the journal here, go back to my character sheet, and I'm going to add a new ability and I'm going to call that ability trap and all trap is going to do is read information about the selected tokens bar 3 property so we're going to retrieve whatever's in bar 3 and let's just test that real quick okay it works fantastic alright so now I can create a button in my notes section here and that button's going to look like this just uh, paste that in. So again, the name of the button is going to be Roll Trap Damage. And what we're looking at here is this tilde info. That's saying the character sheet that we're calling. And then Trap is the ability on that character sheet. So we're calling Info's Trap Ability. So we'll save changes. Click GM Note. All right, now we've got Roll Trap Damage here. Let's click that. And there we go. We've displayed to our players that they've taken 10 fire damage. Okay, so. This is how you can create these control tokens, and you are really only limited by what's available to you in the API. You can call any command that you want, you can call any ability that you want, so you really have a tremendous amount of versatility when you're using these types of control tokens. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.